Hey everybody, welcome back inside another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is April 8th, 2019. Uh, just a few little teasers from uh, domestic releases, as it were. Uh, a couple of upcoming products we want to talk about. And then a few kits that were released here early in uh, the first week of April over in Japan. Now normally we would have a whole bunch of like, ooh, kit release news, kit release news. But uh, that of course is being held right now for the big dump, as you, as it were, of the uh, Shizuka show uh, information, and from a little birdie tells me that'll be this week. So, uh, I don't know if we'll do an actual, like, specific show about Shizuka, or we'll just talk about the releases next Monday. Um, it all depends on, like, you know, if there's anything in there that's so groundbreakingly significant that it requires a video, because chances are a lot of the stuff is going to be uh, release dates for things we already know are coming. So, uh, there's a, you know... Even if Hasegawa were to be like, oh, hey, yeah, Toyota Starlet. Well, we told you about the Toyota Starlet at the end of last year because it was supposed to come out in March. So if that's one of the things at Suzuka, it's not a surprise. We have already know about that. Uh, you know, if we get some BMAX dates or or new, new uh, hobby dates, again, it'll all be subject matter that we already know is coming. So uh, we'll see if there's anything, honestly, like new and earth-shattering, as it were, <laughs> in order to get, uh, justify its own video. Otherwise, we'll just, like I said, we'll, we'll cover the stuff next week, uh, because it will be the kit news and announcements for this month. Uh, and then we will, uh, of course, do an actual show about Shizuka. I'm noticing, like, blinkity, blinkity, blinkity lighting there. <laughs> I find that if I come down here and I try to record this video at a certain time of the morning, I get light out of two windows at the same time. And my, my, my camera really isn't like that. Maybe if I turn this off a little bit. There we go. That's somewhat better. Oh, well. Whatever. We're not here for the aesthetics. You're here for the information. Uh, but, yeah, we'll do, like, a regular show about Shizuka. The actual show itself is February, or February, May 9th through the 12th. So it's the second week of, or maybe the first weekend, first full weekend of May. I'm not sure. Uh, no, that would be the second weekend of May. So uh, that's something to look forward to later on next month. So what is there to talk about here domestically? Ooh, teaser, teaser. So Mobius was at the Detroit Area Auto Modeler Show, I believe is what it's, I think it's the damn show that uh, was last weekend or two weekends ago now. Because um, I believe the Detroit NNL was in the fall. I think that's how that works. Anyway, any rate, they were at whatever show was in Detroit a couple weeks ago, and they were teasing this. Uh, this is a project that has had a lot of uh, whispers behind the scenes. Of course, people who you know were involved in it couldn't say anything because when you're involved with a project like that, you're not allowed to say anything. So a few people that I know were involved with this project and uh, are you know, happy they could talk about it now to a certain extent. But uh, this is a modern-day, uh, so current, if you will, not an old one, a, a brand-new one, aluminum uh, 48 foot spread axle flatbed trailer, probably one of the more requested type of trailers. Uh, there hasn't been a new flatbed trailer made, well, ever. <laughs> uh, the Ertl MP or Ertl AMT Fruhoff is probably the most you know. Uh, there's the extent that uh, sort of extendable one that the bridge beams go on, but uh, there hasn't been a flatbed made since flatbeds were, uh, you know, like over 40 feet. Uh, or 45 feet in, in some cases. So having a completely, totally modern day uh, flatbed is uh, quite a requested item. It doesn't look like they're tying a manufacturer to it. Looks kind of wabashy to me, if I had to guess, just based on the uh, construction. A lot of people uh, were trying to hook Mobius up with East Manufacturing out of Ohio, but their flatbeds are a completely different frame style. So it looks, looks wabashy, maybe Great Dane. Uh, Great Dane, of course, was the brand that they're not allowed to talk about with their, uh, or, well, they if you get the kit, the decals for Great Dane are in the kit, but there's no mention of it anywhere on the outside of the box. The reefer trailer and the van trailer, the 53-foot trailers that Moby's put out at the same time they put out the uh, Lone Star and eventually the Pro Star, those are Great Dane trailers. So whether or not it's an actual Great Dane flatbed or not uh, remains to be seen. Um Probably Wabash and Fruhoff are probably, to this day, still two of the bigger uh, manufacturers. East, of course, is a big player in flatbeds, too, but those tend to be uh, high dollar. Um, they, they are primarily, I would say, used by people who uh, are trying to maximize their freight capacity. Because, like, even, even East Basic flatbed trailer 
uh, uh, will haul 80,000 pounds of freight, not 80,000 pounds of truck, but 80,000 pounds of freight, so the, 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 uh, the flatbed itself is rated for more than you could legally haul anywhere with a, with a spread axle, so, uh, you know, it's a big gusto kind of trailer that attracts that a little bit of extra price to it, so... Uh, I guess it really probably doesn't matter whether or not it's an actual brand name or not as far as the trailer goes. Truck guys will just be beside themselves excited to have a flatbed, modern flatbed trailer to put behind the modern internationals. Of course, there's a couple other, uh, you know, more modern uh, trucks. The, the Italeri Volvo, the Italeri Western Star, um, even, or even arguably things like the uh, Italeri uh, Max Superliner, the Italeri... Um, FLD, the Italeri Peterbilts, you know, there are the, a 48 foot aluminum spread axle flatbed with no branding to it uh, could technically be anything from like the mid 1990s through now. So there's a lot of options to put it behind other than just uh, the Mobius Internationals. And you could argue, certainly argue that uh, if you were going to build a show truck kind of thing, uh, you would not necessarily be pulling a old flatbed with a show truck. Like even if you're restoring a 60s, 70s truck, more likely you would put a modern trailer behind it uh, just because people don't use old trailers. Uh, you know, there, there's, I know, I'm divulging to something that has nothing to do, but this is my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll, we'll take a comma but pause here. Uh, show trucks have two classes. There's show trucks, like show truck, show trucks. They're custom, they're the ones like Lamborghini doors and, and all sorts of goofiness like that. Uh, and then there's what a, what a class called working show trucks, which are show trucks, but they are still moving freight. And if you had a working show truck, you're not going to hook a 1970s flatbed trailer behind it because it would basically not be roadworthy. I mean, you could restore it, but it's not going to have the capacity and whatnot, no ABS, no air ride, nothing that you would require for modern freight. A lot of a lot of places these days uh, will require air ride trailers. You're not even, you can't, I mean, they still make spring ride trailers, but a lot of places will require air ride trailers for their freight. So even if you were to, uh, you know, have like a Ken, like the company Kenworth W9 or um, I'm trying to think what else, the Titan, they just really, you know, the GMC Titan, the GMC, uh, Astro just got reissued. Even if you were to build a show truck out of that, you would still technically, in a working show truck sense, put it behind, put a modern trailer behind it because you wouldn't, you wouldn't use an old trailer for a for a working show truck. Now, if you were doing a show truck show truck that literally did nothing but drive around, okay, then you would have a period piece behind it. But uh, the the people that can literally, you know, drop a couple hundred thousand dollars on making a show truck and then not use it to do anything other than just show it as a truck are people who own trucking companies, <laughs> right? Or, or or they're independently wealthy, you know, entrepreneurs. They're not actual truck drivers because you just, you never have that kind of cash. Um, or I should never say never, but most likely not. At any rate, the other thing that is uh, up that we got a teaser for is from uh, Salvino's JR, their next version of their Monte Carlo NASCAR kit. This one is going to be uh, Bobby Allison's 1981 Riverside uh, winner for people who don't or who are too young to remember. NASCAR used to race at Riverside, which is a road, was a road track back in the day. Um, they don't race there at all anymore. You know, it was re basically replaced more or less by Sears Point, which I know a lot of people don't even know what Sears Point is. That would be Infineon Raceway. Uh, I will let my NASCAR Ludden, Ludden show a little bit because that will always be Sears Point to me. <laughs> I don't care what you call the racetrack. Uh, so this will be the uh, later front end, the dual headlight front end Monte Carlo. I know there were some of the last Monte, first Monte Carlo kits that were accidentally released or accidentally molded uh, with the parts to do both, both the round headlight and the square headlights, like a 1,000 or, or 2,000 of the first bit of that run before they caught that problem. So this will be just a late uh, headlight version. And from what um, what Salvino said in their Facebook post about this was it'll be the first of several uh, Rainier Racing uh, subject matter. They have a licensing for Rainier Racing. So we'll see what those are, uh, should anybody care even at this point. And that'll take us over to the kit releases from Japan this week. A couple of reissues from Hasegawa and a couple of restocks from 
Hey, Oshima, and looks like we got one of the Fujimi kits in for uh, April as well. So starting at Fujimi, it's just this is a restock, basically, uh, of their Nissan Fairlady SR311. Uh, this kit was brought back from the dead, as it were, back in, like, 2012 or so. And uh, it's been reissued a couple times since then, so this is just a restock of that uh, reissue. And then at Hasagawa, a couple of reissues that are a little bit longer in the tooth in the sense that we haven't seen them in a quite a long time. First one up is this uh, Cabin Reynard 89D Formula 3000. This would be your uh, 1989 uh, car. This, of course, was the car as it was raced in uh, a couple of the Japanese Formula 3000 races that didn't ban tobacco livery. So it has the full cabin racing team thing on there rather than it being uh, a, like, made up name, I can't remember what it was, like, Racing Excitement or something like that was the last release of this that had the non-tobacco livery. Basically, the decals were the exact same decals that are in this that were in the other uh, Cabin 89D, except that you are supposed to use the actual Cabin wording uh, instead of the the fake Cabin wording, if, as it were, the tobacco-friendly version. Uh, is what you get there. And then the release of this, the Razio Trampio Civic Group N car. Uh, so this was to be the Japanese Endurance Racing Series. It still exists to this day, but back in the day, this was uh, a tier below JTCC, uh, even more factory stock than JTCC already was, which is saying something. Uh, this car represents the 1993 N1 Endurance uh, car. So the fact that it, they were the 91 and 92 Endurance Round Champions is really kind of pointless because that's not what this car is for. I guess it's just sort of letting you know that, hey, by the way, these guys were really good. Uh, they did not win the 1993 championship as far as I know. They did win a couple of races, did win a number of races, but not the actual uh, championship. Uh, they have like the little flag seal on there saying, hey, look, we're the 92 champions. Um, now, Frankie over at SK Decals does offer a set of decals to do the 1992 season car, so if you wanted to build uh, that, those decals are available. Uh, this this has not been reissued for 15 plus years, and if you wanted to build any of the Group N cars, well, again, with Frankie re redid all the decals for all of these cars, the Rezos, the uh, Take One, the Nori P, and the uh, Spoon, if you want to do any of those cars, you need the wheels that are in this kit that are very specific to this specific Group N kit. Uh, they're Enki racing wheels. Now, chances are, if, they, if this sells, they'll reissue the other three, probably, depending on how the licensing works for all those. <coughs> uh, but if you want to just build them and not worry about the licensing and get the decals from SK, well, you need this specific version of that kit to do that. Over at Aoshima, a couple of restocks and one modified reissue. Restocks this, the Honda Accord Sear Wagon. Uh, not too much to say there. It's been, you know, put into the model car boxing, probably. Uh, let's see, we're at 100 and something now on the model car line. So, uh, what, six, eight months ago was when this was uh, reboxed again. So that's back out. This is a reissue, the High Ace uh, 2010 Toyota High Ace Boxy Style VIP Van. It's one of the very first uh, cars that was put into the Toon model car lineup because it's kit number three. Uh, so that's getting another round. And then the modified reissue, and I'm only saying modified with like the biggest air quotes ever, is this. It is the Liberty Work, Liberty Walk R35 Advan Type 2 Version 2. So this is the Type 2 Version 2. Uh, this kit was, you know, it's basically a reissue of the kit that just was released, the one with the copper paint job that I really love. And this just has uh, the Advan livery to it, which is the black and red. What is very interesting about the way they chose to do the decals with this is instead of uh, having you sort of mask off up to where that color line is on the front door, they have you mask the back half of the car red, right about the midpoint of the rear fender backwards, and then the uh, area around the doors and the rear, around the front of the rear wheel, the th three the uh, C pillar, as well as the C pillar window, that window behind the front door window, uh, actually has advanced striping on it on this on the car as it's built in real life. So they replicated those uh, that that decal as well. All of that is done with decals. My only like issue with that per se is the idea that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, more than likely you're going to wind up not being able to match the paint of the decals. So what 
they also did is included a bunch of black stripes so that you can mask from that door back and then just lay the black stripes over your red paint job, which I thought was a very nice touch uh, because it gives the builder the option to either use the kit decals and hope for the best or uh, actually two-tone it with paint and decals. Nominally speaking, you could two-tone it with paint. Like if you wanted to mask the red lines off and just paint the red lines over the black, Instead of back, instead of doing it backwards, where you're just sort of two toning it and using the decals as the stripes. I mean, there's a, there's basically three ways to do this: mask it off, mask it off, and use the decals for the black stripes, or mask it off and use their red stripe, red and black decals to do all of the uh, C pillar and in, in front of the fender work and have the back half be your paint job. So my only concern again with that is the fact that I would think you're going to, it's kind of dicey as whether or not you can find a paint that's going to match the decals exactly. Because within, you know, me and the whole clear coating decals, I don't do that because A, my stuff doesn't get exposed to the sun like some people seem to think their stuff does. And B, uh, you know, I don't want to deal with interactions between the clear and the decals. But with that, the that's a paint job in real life, or a wrap anyway. So it's shiny. You're going to need to... Even if you weren't to uh, clear coat all the decals, like all the Advan li wording, Liberty Walk wording, and all that stuff, I would, uh, you know, do the two tone part and then clear coat the whole car that way, uh, because within the way of the the sheen and reality of the one to one car, it needs to be painted and cleared because that's the way it looks in real life. So. It would be very, very obvious if you have a very, very shiny black paint job, a very, very shiny red paint job, and then your decals, are, again, are not going to match sheen-wise, especially if you use the, all of the decals to do all of the black and red, uh, you know, striping, and it's just going to, it's not going to look right. You're going to you're gonna have to clear coat those decals. There's not any way around that that I can see to have it look correct in my eyes. Your eyes, different story. So, anyway, guys, that wraps up this one, I think. Uh... Okay, so we'll, uh, we're looking forward to the Shizuka stuff, see if there's anything really uh, really new or for ground shattering or anything in there that we don't really already know about. Um, I'm guessing Hasegawa's new tool is going to be the Starlet, so there's nothing really you know ground shaking there. Um, we'll see if you get a Pagani Zonda or something different, because there probably should be an Aoshima new tool. Uh, in the spring, as it were, and traditionally speaking, their supercar stuff has been in the fall, um, and the fact that at this point, the only thing we saw about the Zonda was like a little placard at Nuremberg Toy Fair, means to me that like they're not even in a place where they're, you know, have a prototype done yet, so maybe we'll see a prototype of the Zonda, uh, but having that be the kit in the spring, prob probably not, that, I'm going to guess that's probably fall, that's probably a Tokyo uh, model and hobby show. Uh, announcements. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys on the other side.